Dan Tokar here at the Willow Forge in Shepherdstown, West Virginia. And while it's not exactly blacksmithing, uh, it does involve a pair of tongs. Today's subject is valley tongs, or one of the tools you use in making a traditional standing seam roof. I don't know where you guys are, but in some parts of the country, way back when, in the 1860s, 18 70s until, oh, I don't know, maybe 1920s, uh, there was a kind of roof uh, that was made out of flat uh, turn plates that had the corners turned up and then rolled over into a lock seam. Uh, they call them standing seam roofs. They're quite common around here on old buildings. Um, they take a fair amount of uh, labor to produce. Uh, there's a modern equivalent that uh, uses pre-made lock seams on pans uh, and a mechanical uh, a, a electric powered seamer that uh, goes along and locks the seam. But back in the old days you had to bend up all of those things by hand uh, out of big rolls of sheet metal. So this tool is known as a valley tong. Uh, the valleys are where you have uh, different angles of the roof meeting and you typically have flashing or uh, a, a bent up piece that goes in the valley in the, uh, the angle between where the two sections of roof uh, meet. And this pair of tongs is uh, actually one of my set. Um, I've done two traditional standing seam roofs in my life. Um, uh, I'm fairly sure I don't want to do another one, uh, but I have a little bit of work that I have to do today uh, to help in repairing one. Uh, but uh, 20 years ago, when I was moving my cabin, uh, or moving the cabin that would become my cabin, uh, I decided to do a traditional standing seam roof. And uh, I learned an awful lot, which is one reason why I don't do it. For a living. But anyway, I'm going to show you how these things were used. It's kind of fun and interesting, and who knows, you might need to use them more just for sheet metal work. In this case, I'm going to be bending up uh, a little valley. First thing I'm going to do is mark off where my bend is going to happen. Uh, the jaws on the palm are a little over a foot wide, so I can make marks about every 10 inches to a foot, and that will give me enough of a guide to overlap where I'm going to be bending this. This is, what is this? This is probably a 12 foot section of one of those pre made pans. That they use in the modern standing seam work. It's not turn plate, it's actually some sort of electro galvanized stuff. So it's not traditional turn plate. Anyway, marked off. Okay, so you take your tongs and run them up to where you made your mark. Who says, Why don't you get a 12 foot long sheet metal 
Thank 